Hello everybody, this is Chaos with Chaos Esports Productions bringing another viewer cast. Today, we're looking at a PVT submitted by Alex, and we're going to see what we can do to improve his game. So, overall, I think the game was executed fairly well. There are a couple points that I want to make kind of halfway through this, so let's go ahead and... Your early game is fairly well. Um, I didn't really see a whole lot as far as issues with building orders or things of that nature. Overall, I think you did a fairly decent job. You scouted 9 pylon, which is fine. Um, I tend to go 13, but, you know, just a preference thing. You can get in here and harass a little bit, which, you know, forces them to pull another SV SCV. Uh, so you come out, you see... You see the gas, and, and that's kind of a key, you know, turning point for what his options are. Because by him going gas, that means he's probably going to be teching up fairly quickly. And you don't know whether or not it's going to be, like, Widow Mine drops, maybe a Marine Marauder push. Um, uh, looks like you get a Stalker stuck here. That's a bummer. Um... So yeah, so you're going to start killing this pylon, yada yada, going for the robo facility, which I think is okay. Now, I don't quite understand why you got the forge so early. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll allow you to get your upgrades quick enough, and since you're not getting very many like gas intensive units, that could, you know, put you ahead in the upgrade, uh, you know, upgrade battle in the long run, but since you really don't know what your opponent's doing, I would kind of say holding off on the upgrades is, is okay. You do want to get your, your forge down probably sometime around. Putting it down about this point in time is probably okay, but getting it so early, you know, you never know what you're going to deal with, whether or not you're going to be dealing with, like, a really weird early marine push or, you know, just stupid things. So getting the forge as early as you did, I probably wouldn't recommend. Um, but yeah, going for Robo, which is kind of a s typical build for uh, against Terran player. Not looking to early expand. Now, one thing that I would recommend you do is take... When your first Stalker comes out... Well, I, I mean, this one got stuck, but once your first free Stalker comes out, just send him across the map. See if your opponent's building a bunker and check to see whether or not he's expanding, because... Knowing his whether or not he's expanding early on is going to kind of be the key to how you want to play your game. If he goes for a really early expansion, you obviously have the option to be an aggressor to that and you know try and deny it, or you can try you can just play the macro game and expand yourself. So, just some small things. Getting out the observer, which is good. I always like getting like three or four observers when I'm playing against Terran. Now, at this point, I'm, I'm really confused because you went and got the robotics facility, and that's kind of chosen your tech path, but you haven't chosen to plant down your um, Robo Bay because uh, Marine Marauder, in general, is a fairly effective build just because any gateway pushes are pretty much immediately denied without any splash damage. So getting the robotics bay down as quickly as possible and getting your your uh, Colossus count up to like the 2 and 3 range is definitely something that you should be looking for. Also, one key timing that you want to want to be aware of is most Terran players like to push out with 4 medevacs. So if you go over to your opponent's base with this observer, you want to first see if he's got a starport. If he doesn't have a starport, you need to be a little worried about like a proxy widow mine type play. But if you do see the starport, you want to you want to note the number of medevacs that he has and kind of when he's probably thinking about pushing out. So we will uh, we'll talk about that shortly once we get in here. So observers over here, you come in, you scout. Now at this point. All you've seen is a is a is a ton of marines. You really, I mean, if we look at his count, he's already at, you know, let's see, what is that? Eight, sixteen, twenty-four. He's at twenty-four marines already, and you know he hasn't expanded. You haven't quite 
scouted it yet, but it's just something you want to be looking for. Because obviously if he's expanded, he's probably looking to get his economy up a little bit more before he pushes out. So, you see the medevacs come out. So, you only see two, so you know that he's probably going to be pushing fairly soon. This is kind of why it's a little risky to plant down this Twilight Council at this point, because you want to have splash damage in your army composition in order to deal with the huge number of marines that he has. You know, equal number of stalkers can generally fair take out a huge army of marines, but nine times out of ten, it's going to be a two-to-one ratio of marines to stalkers, and he's just going to melt through your army because the DPS of marines comparative to uh, stalkers is just so much higher. So... You are going to have an upgrade advantage as far as plus one already be, being done. So, that's obviously in your favor. Uh, getting some cannons because you're worried about drops. You scout around with your observer. You see the factory. Now, one thing that you can note is that he's not building anything out of his, out of his factory. Which means he's basically just saying, I'm not going anything mech-wise. Widow mines, tanks, not, not even going to worry about it. So he is strictly going for a marine medevac push. Now, this is actually something that uh, I believe Filter Starcraft talks about. And basically from, actually it's from about bronze to platinum league, this type of build is just super, super effective if your opponent doesn't know what he's up against or better yet, doesn't understand the mechanics of splash damage. So, I'm, I'm sure you probably see a lot of players doing something very similar to this. So basically, at this point, you're sitting back. Now, you are floating a lot of money, so you definitely want to be pumping out units as much as possible. You only have, what, two observers out at this point? You've got one in your army and one over kind of sitting in his base. And then also at the same time, you notice that his army is not there, so you know he's pushing out. So definitely need to be looking to get on more units. So one composition tip is... You never want to be overpopulated in just stalkers. You want to have a mixture of stalkers, sentries, and zealots. Uh, biggest reason is, is obviously the force fields and guardian shield are super, super efficient at dealing with the high DPS that Marine Marauder puts out. Plus, it gives you an opportunity to cut his army in half. And then zealots are simply there to just tank damage. Uh, they're you don't want your stalkers to die because obviously your stalkers are fairly gas intensive and gas is kind of a key portion of the protoss army so now also you do have this uh, gateway deactivated for a good majority of the this game so just small little mechanic things uh, okay so looking pretty good you've taken out you took out a pretty good uh, chunk of his army with that force field which is awesome but as you can see you're you're still behind in supplies because you're floating so much money uh, so it looks like he's hesitating you, I don't know why he he used a <laughs> a, a booster thing and just stood there but eh, whatevs so yeah so you're pretty high on minerals because you've primarily just built stalkers and now that you've ex you know used all your gas you can only build zealots, really. And then you choose to, to go ahead and get the Twilight Council down, which is, is an okay choice, but obviously, depending on whether or not he's going to continue building medevacs versus Vikings is going to be kind of a, a key thing. So go ahead, going ahead and getting the Temple Archives is probably okay in this situation. Also, at this point, since the Templar Archives is done, I would go ahead and warp in uh, just two TIE Templar. That way they're continually building up energy so that once you do finish your storm research, you'll immediately have like two to four uh, storms right off the bat. So getting up your expansion, just kind of waiting. Got your got some high Templar. Storm hasn't quite started yet. Uh, you see that he's coming down. Now, actually, I think Storm is done. Let's, let's check that. Yeah, Storm is done. So you have this kind of 
oopsie daisy moment where where you a move into your opponent and your high templar just just melt so one thing that i like to ooh i hit the back button um one thing that i like to do is i like to put my high templar on a separate hotkey from my main army that way i can kind of flip between the two and cast my spells and whatnot because usually sentries on one is okay that way you can put up your guardian shield and force field when needed and then by having the high templar on two that allows you to just flip over to high templar real quick by hitting the two key and throwing down your storms or feedbacks depending on uh what you need so now at this point you've only got one century with two force fields which is which is actually just enough to to deal with this ramp but since you have all of your all of your units on one hot key you would have to tab in order to get to uh to your force fields which obviously depending on how much apm you have which eh, it's marginal at this point um depends on whether or not that that is truly a viable option. So that's kind of why I keep them on two separate hotkeys. It's a lot easier to manage, and if, even if you don't have the APM, you can easily switch between the two and not have to worry about the tab key. So uh, let's go ahead and slow this down to normal speed. Now, why did you choose to back up? Because at this point, by him having to come up this ramp, he is, he is like forcing i mean you've set him up for a really really good storm i mean literally you just plant a storm right here and half his army just immediately dies because he stems into it and you don't have to worry about it now personally i would i would do one storm here and that will do some damage to the medevacs and then feed back two of the two of the medevacs that way you have two less medevacs to deal with and i mean it just <laughs> put you in a lot better position so you immediately lose your high templar and he knows that he can just kind of waltz in and pretty much run over you now going back to the comment about having up colossus had you even had like one colossus this battle probably would have gone significantly different just because having that extra splash damage always is beneficial uh unfortunately he didn't have plus two at the time which is a little bit of a bummer but overall, I think, from a structure standpoint, I think you're okay. Uh, I, I think you're a little bit slow on getting out your splash damage, and then obviously, small minor misclicks uh, are <laughs> not exactly helpful. Um, you did a good job of scouting. You pretty much had a good idea of what your opponent was doing at any given point in time. So that's that's pretty good and then as far as him honestly you deal with that army and, and you win the game because he hasn't expanded and you just have the ability to outproduce him and that's pretty much it so um, I hope this was helpful feel free to uh, leave comments and let me know what you think if you have any questions or want more feedback on something more specific uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below if you are new to my channel and are checking this out feel free to follow me because you know I produce this kind of stuff all the time uh, also if you would like me to do a cast of one of your replays send your replays to the email in the description as well as ch check me out on twitch and we can come play team games and just come hang out and have some fun so I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next game